This was my first potato cannon, but it's not the one we'll be using in this video. This one had two major design flaws that I'll need to fix first. One of the issues with this design was the placement of the igniter. Here we used a standard barbecue grill igniter placed on the back side of the combustion chamber. The reason this caused trouble was because one of the electrodes was placed on the side of the barbecue igniter while one of them was placed on the end. This meant I had to run a wire from the side one all the way to the top, hoping that a spark would jump from the top to the wire. The wire would get bent over time. And not only that, but it would also get covered in hairspray, as I will explain in a minute. The idea with the new design is to have the igniter on the side, with two wires attaching to two bolts, which run through the side of the combustion chamber and into the center, where they nearly meet. This will allow a spark to jump between the two ends. The other primary change is a change of fuel. This is what we used initially, cheap hairspray that you can find at the dollar store. If you didn't know, hairspray isn't actually flammable. It's just the compressed gas inside of the can which pushes the hairspray out that is. This means that after just a few sprays, the propellant would be low enough that the hairspray stopped it from combusting. Not only that, but the hairspray would stick to the electrodes of the igniter, stopping sparks from jumping between them. To fix the issues, I am now using this. Carburetor and choke cleaner for an internal combustion engine. If you don't know what a carburetor is though, don't worry. It's pretty much just a filter that goes on the intake of a combustion engine to keep any debris from getting into the cylinder. The reason this works so well is fuel is because internal combustion engines rely on combustion to run. If this cleaner had some sort of chemical in it that stopped the combustion, the engine would no longer run, which is why it's so flammable. Other than that, we didn't really make any other major changes, well, besides redesigning the entire thing. But I do have to come clean. This is not my design. This was designed by Ethan Allred. Both his channel and this specific video will be linked in the description. Now, let's move on to the star of the show. The Sabo. Hey, that rhymed. This is a Schedule 40 one and a half inch diameter PVC pipe. The same type of pipe that is the barrel of the new potato cannon. But there's an issue with the setup. You see, compressed air is what launches the projectile out of the barrel. And if you just have fins, the air will just go around the fins. So how do you make this stable and come out of the barrel at a very high speed? The first thing you can do is make a piston. As you can see, this piston has the minimum amount of surface area required touching the tube while still being able to be stable and not tilt. This goes into the barrel first. But we still have a lack of stability with the projectile. Who's to say this doesn't turn in the barrel and come out in a completely different direction than you're expecting? This is where these come in. These pieces latch in between the fins of the projectile and hook around the main shaft. And once they're all together, they fit perfectly into the barrel. When the explosion occurs in the combustion chamber, the exhaust gases push against the piston which in turn pushes against both the stabilizers and the projectile in the barrel. Once the projectile makes its way out of the barrel, the barrel is no longer holding these stabilizers together. And as air gets trapped in these top grooves, the air actually pushes them off. Oops. The projectile now flies along on its own with the piston falling short behind but since it has a much larger surface area, the piston actually slows down, allowing the dart to stay ahead, being stabilized by its four fins. Unlike my previous Sabo video where the main shaft is made of aluminum, this shaft is made of solid steel.
This video was a blast to film, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. I was thinking about turning this into a series, but to do so, I'm going to need your help. Please, tell me down below, what things would you like to see shot with my Sabo? And also, if you have a project that you'd like me to feature in a future video, feel free to leave me some feedback in the comments. If you want to see more of the Sabo action, I recommend watching my first Sabo video. A link to it will be in the description. Anyway, that's all I had planned for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.